for the ISPING conference in July in Hamburg, I created a, a presentation which we couldn't record at that moment, so now I'm creating a, a screencast from it to share you this work in progress. So what I'm focused on in this paper um, is related to self-organizing in open source communities. So in the past six years, I've been uh, in, the, in the shadows of the Drupal ecosystem trying to understand a little bit and I will go into a little bit more details since uh, a year ago I started becoming a little bit more active to uh, create some uh, more feedback for my research. So basically what I want to focus on is uh, support for collaboration for innovation and to do that I will examine the Drupal case. So first of all, self-organization. I mean, self-organization is basically the uh, reduction of friction and the increase of synergy. In the this case here, uh, we so the, the the top figure is a part of the self-organization that happens in happens in here convection cells you see in C. Um, and A and B are like side views of C. C is a top view and A and B are side views. So what you see is a, is a, a fluid and the fluid has self-organized in all these kind of uh, convection cells. So how did that happen? First of all, if you look, uh, so if you have a side view, you will see uh, that all the uh, fluid is going in random directions, which is, of course, the uh, characteristic of a fluid. Uh, but then um, in B here, you see at the bottom, you see that uh, the, the fluid is heated. And by heating the fluid, this random uh, uh, interactions you will actually find some local um, feedback. And to demonstrate that a little bit, let's go to the drawing below here, which is actually representing uh, the self-organization in, in a magnet. But you could actually also see, see it as the top view of our uh, convection cells. And in both cases, it's more or less the same dynamic. What you see is that the first pure random, so this is like, take that this is the top view and this is the side view. Then you see kind of the, the in-between state where some local um, uh, alignment is happening. So take that if, if you have a cycle, if, if there is one cycle over here, it will of course trigger a second cycle over there to align with it. So that's a little bit also what you have in, in the mag magnetic where north and south align. So that's in this diagram and then in the end you, you kind of have uh, the system self-organized, although not homogeneous. So what you see here is that there are three directions the, ma the, the magnet has uh, organized. So, so if you go on the top view, you see for example over here, you see this small, it looks a little bit like a flower, right? So you see that the center, all of them are aligned, and that means that in, in the other sides it's a little bit, the figure is a little bit uh, less round you also here you see like it's a little bit d-shaped so probably those are like similar to these boundaries over here where there is a, a non-alignment so basically you can understand um, self-organization also as a kind of alignment but it's aligning by self-organizing by increasing the coordinations between the element that's essential you increase the coordination okay and this these are uh, dissipative system meaning that you create a uh, strong energy and then it got dissipated uh, over the fluid and then you see that uh, from the dissipative energy you, the the challenge is to align right okay so those are all kind of concepts that's a bit the theory now let's go to free and open source my first um, remark is that um, if I go to for example literature on um, open source in, in, in management journals, I really got this feeling that they have a very uh, limited view on what open source is. And so what I did is I, I add, I create, I just picked several um, icons uh, 
that relate in some or other way to an openness spirit. It's not always clear what the open source part is, okay? So, for example, over here we've got Wikipedia, which is, of course, known for an open encyclopedia that everyone can edit. Now, the, the wiki itself is also some software that, that's also open source, but in this project it's more the openness of the data which is important, right? Uh, over here, this is uh, a very nice drawing of a very sweet octopus, I guess. And uh, it's, the, it's the icon of um, the Git repository. So it's a distributed version system, which is a, a created, uh, used by many uh, open source communities or projects um, to collaborate uh, on software. So you can uh, send your software to it, but at the same time, someone may be working on the same software, and this system uh, mediates it. It's, it, it organizes it to give you a way to see how to merge it and, and, and how to split it, all kind of things, okay? Then we've got, of course, operation systems. There's one over here, Linux, everyone w w knows, and here's the symbol of 3DSB, which is another operation system. So there it's, uh, it's, it's well, it's a full tool, right? So, uh, where they try to organize more, like GNOME is probably um, hum, a tool on, on top of those operating systems. Uh, it's, I think it's okay. Uh, we got licensing uh, GNU, uh, which is something different. You've got, for example, Apache, which is used for web services, which can then stand on top of those things. You've got Eclipse, which is a, a programming environment. Eclipse and Linux are two of the, and Apache, like the, the one I put down here in this corner, are the ones I've seen most in managerial literature. But now let's go to this, this last line here. The first here is Napster. Now, don't think that Napster itself was open source, but basically what Napster tries to do is make music free, right? And open as in free, there, there is uh, some mixture between those communities. This is BitTorn, which is kind of a way to uh, pass information. I mean, um, I know that uh, quite uh, th this can be used for, for very uh, normal things. If I'm not mistaken, um, I think World of Warcraft uses it uh, to upload their things. If I'm not mistaken, or they have their own uploader. Uh, but you could, you could also use it, for example, to uh, know people using it for, for, for videos. Never tried it, but... I know it's used for it. Um, this one um, is a very interesting case, which is kind of opposite to the... Everyone loves the Wikipedia, but Wiki, WikiLeaks is quite controversial, right? Um, the, still, I mean, those are very interesting cases. In, in another video, I talk a little bit more about how these uh, technologies shouldn't always be seen as, as something uh, you should repress, but more as something to learn from. Those are game changers, and I think the best way to deal with them is by competing with them, not by trying to suppress them. They, they have some value, and the value is relevant. So, so how do you compete with that? But that's for, uh, presented in the micro spin-off video, so if you want to know that, go and have a look over there. I'm going to focus on uh, openness and self-organizing innovation. That's where I want to go to. I, I'm, I'm still going to introduce uh, concepts. I, I know they, uh, there are other videos I've introduced them, but they are fundamental, so we should understand them. Um, there is a concept called technology-mediated social participation. There are some papers online if you search for, for this term. Uh, and I, I believe they are mostly inspired by the um, uh, Arabic uh, revolution that's happening. This is... Egypt, where we have the, the tanks and so the, the revolution over there, there's a very different kind of mediation happening here. Now, it's probably impossible to have this kind of a medi um, event without some kind of uh, internet as a medium, like in McLuhan's concept, the, the, the medium is message concept. It's that, that there's some kind of mediation happening between technology and social, right? Uh, but you shouldn't really disconnect them. So it's technology mediated, uh, technology creates a social participation, but social participation creating new technological mediation. So it's a bootstrap, that's how we call it. 
what I'll use that technology med technology mediated social participation as uh, one of the concepts we're gonna need. Another concept we need is stigma gene. This is a, a much older concept. So it's a, it's a very nice concept uh, dating back from 50s where um, there were the, I forgot his name but um, research on termites uh, ants and other uh, social creatures and basically what it, what is happening is that there's there's some sign in this case in the environment uh, well in all the cases in the environment but in this case it's a physical heap of dirt uh, with ter with with ants you have uh, pheromones as as signs and what happens is that the the um, the insect or the the agent acts on that sign. Now I'm, I'm saying agent because basically there's another paper of my advisor uh, Francis Heligen. You can read about uh, Stigmergy and Wikipedia that shows how the fact that there is information or no information, but the fact that you have a medium that allows you to mediate that creates a stigmergic behavior. Now. All of these terms relate to other concepts. It, they have been discussed in, 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 in several uh, other fields, like we know it as distributed intelligence or collective intelligence. And m more recently, towards the management, you see uh, wisdom of the crowd or crowdsourcing. But basically, this is all kind of more or less related to the self-organization. So in this case, it's agents. Agents have challenges. And, and, and more stigmatic reactions, but also the self-organization, uh, as we showed uh, over here, in fluids. They still exist. The interactions here are physics, but you could also see similar interactions on a social level and uh, where technology mediation plays a role, um, just a little bit like the heating here. That's just an example, right? But Okay. Moving on, going to Drupal. Drupal is a content management system, and the first thing I want to show you, well, it's it's <laughs> uh, kind of behind my the, the diagram. So uh, the colors represent uh, some kind of content management system. The drawing below here is uh, from um, uh, Google Trends. So what you see is the uh, often the so in a time scale. So this is the time, right? Um, how often a certain word is being searched for. So, and if you see that in 2004, people were searching for Lotus and some people were searching for SharePoint. Now, SharePoint more or less stayed stable uh, all uh, during the year, so it grew a little bit, but now it's declining a little bit. It's quite stable, so the search for SharePoint by using Google uh, is not so much. Of course, like I mean, I, I, I'm clearly trying to art articulate that this is quite subjective, right? So, But what it can show us is that earlier on, 2004, the Lotus, and Lotus is IBM and SharePoint is Microsoft, um, the proprietary software was uh, dominating the CMS market, right? Okay, CMS market, CMS trend. So, but what you see now is that uh, basically WordPress and Joomla uh, got in and you see WordPress with a steady grow, you see Joomla with not such a steady grow, but that's because there was also Mambo who was before it, and then when Mambo dropped, uh, Joomla uh, increases, but I could only have this amount, uh, five uh, things in, in Google Trends, so I was limited. And you also see at this moment that Joomla is declining again. They seem to have quite some troubles uh, containing stability with their community while WordPress has a steady growth. Now, the I, I will right away go into details about sustainability for community, uh, but first of all, I want to um, draw your attention that Drupal is a light blue line you find below here, and it's below all the others. So your very first question should be, why am I looking at Drupal if it doesn't seem to be appearing in this graph? Well, first of all, this is a trend graph. It's about how often people search for a book, a word. While uh, Drupal is, uh, if, you, if most people will actually search for microblogging, um, and then WordPress is, is is your best option. You so you you should really look at uh, what you want to use a CMS for. Now, 
my research is on self-organization. So what I'm looking at is, um, is, is uh, the, so what I have to explain next is actually why is Drupal for me the most inter interesting in, uh, in, in relation to self-organization? And I will explain you that right away. First of all, Drupal has, uh, uh, very, so, so what I do is I participated in many of those uh, open source uh, events to figure out what is happening. And what you notice is that there's a, there's a very much, um, how, how do I express that, um, social, um, uh, emotional relation with Drupal. I mean, there are people who hate Drupal, there are people who love Drupal. There are very few people who don't care. That's an interesting situation. So what you see is that it, people who love Drupal really go to quite extremes. Like, I don't want to know how long it took to, to, to knit those socks, but someone has actually knit the socks. Um, ba baking a cake, creating Drupal kind of icons just to, to have fun, or uh, which happened during Drupal Con Paris, uh, start walking around in a Drupal icon. There are also Drupal songs. There are, you, can, you, you can't imagine it, but... All kind of things related to community building exist. Drupal marriages, I mean, always find that a little bit strange, but the songs are interesting, you should check them. Um, the community um, has been growing exponentially, and so I think this was, um, no, I don't, I don't dare to say, uh, but uh, this is probably something as 1,500 people or something. Uh, this was a few Drupal cons ago, and now the last two Drupal cons in the United States was 3,000 people. It's less in Europe, although I think this was kind of the same amount uh, in DrupalCon London this year. So it's quite, it's quite a mess. So why do people get attracted to something and, and so excited by something that seems to be so dull as a content management system? Basically because Drupal it's more than just a content management system, it's a community. It's something that allows you to do whatever you want to do. And that's a little bit interesting because it, some people consider Drupal a framework for development. Um, now, I know that there has been competitions where Drupal tried to uh, um, register, but um, not everyone considered it a framework for development. Now, I think it is, and it is more specifically uh, a very interesting framework for technology-mediated social participation. Um, and event creation is very important in there. We have a lot of people at DrupalCons, but now you have uh, smaller camps, and they are not all um, purely Drupal. Many of them have Drupal in their titles, right? Like, um, let's see, uh, Boston Drupal meeting here. But I, I don't know if Long Island Meetup, maybe that's uh, not Drupal only, but like an open Japan uh, work jam. So I guess that's probably not just Drupal only. It's, it's open source uh, more generally, but uh, people from Drupal are uh, probably as a, as a group getting there. So they are organized with this system. So this is just a week. I think this was, I forgot which week it was. You can probably track it back some. Well, oh, here, 8 June 2011, 9 June. So this was the, the 9th of June in 2011. So you see that at one day there were quite some meetups and in, in all over the world, I guess. Uh, R Regina, about Frankfurt, um, Austin. Norwich, you see, it's, it's, it's all kind of, it can be everywhere. So events are very important. But, I mean, think about this a little bit. Sorry, let's go back to there. Think about this. I mean, we're talking about communities who are of software developers, right? So they know how to build the tools to collaborate online. So why do we see an explosion of events, right? So that's an interesting phenomenon, and I think it's it's not just random. It it it's related to the global brain, but that's for another presentation. Um, I kind of use a lot of the same things there too. Um, but the, the the interesting thing is that events and and physically meeting in real life is very important. And if you if you go to media studies, you will see that there is quite some work on what is called extended cognition, which is actually something. 
coming from the, the cognitive domain, but it's been adapted by uh, media philosophy. And it's a very interesting concept. It's, we, we are extending ourselves. The internet is an extension of ourselves. So that, that's how it relates to the global brain, but it, because in the global brain, you see people as neurons. So that's a little bit of relation there. Um, so, so you are getting extended, okay? So, so that means meeting physically too. So that's why all these events are happening. Okay, but all kind of events are not unique to Drupal. Why am I looking at Drupal? Um, basically, the content management system is a tool that allows me to, to create all kind of stuff. So if I want to do, we had a knowledge sharing project and therefore we used Drupal. But then I noticed a very interesting um, um, situation which makes Drupal uh, different from many of the other projects I've seen. First of all, you, you have open source projects that are very focused on uh, or dominated, let's say, by the community. So uh, it's all pure community. On the other hand, you have uh, um, projects uh, who actually are uh, transformed businesses. Uh, I think uh, Eclipse was uh, uh, from IBM division, if I'm not mistaken. So, and they, if I'm not mistaken, it can be that I'm mistaken. But I thought they changed the licensing to make it open source. Um, if not, there are some other projects. I'm pretty sure. Sure, the, uh, I know that there are projects like that. I'm not exactly sure if it was Eclipse. Um, on the other hand, you have projects that have been always open source, uh, always free, and have always a little bit of struggle to get uh, accepted. Uh, uh, adopted by by a large uh, by the large uh, by everyone, let's say. Um, uh, I, do, I don't want to say anything about financial things because there I don't know anything about. But now let's look at Drupal. Why is Drupal so interesting from a from this perspective? Because basically it has a very interesting balance between business and community. Oh, let's let me rephrase that. It had a very interesting balance during the incubation phase because basically I believe at this moment Drupal is leaving the, the startup or incubation phase and what, what is happening now, well, we have to see, we have to wait and see. Um, but um, so this is the basically all kind of uh, sponsors of Drupal cons. So they have sponsored at least Drupal cons a few times, like two or three times or they wouldn't be on this slide. And uh, the, 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 the size more or less should say something about how often they sponsor DrupalCons, but it's, it's not exactly. Um, but so, so in the middle here, I put Acquia uh, very big because lately Acquia is dominating, or dominating, let's say, um, it's, it's the biggest sponsor of the DrupalCon. So they are really supporting the community now. Uh, and that's because the founder of Drupal uh, is actually the CTO of, of, of Acquia here. Um, but what is interesting is that Acquia is a relative ne new company. I think it was uh, end 2007 or something when they start being created. And so, so they are, um, I think the last three DrupalCons or so, they are, they are the big sponsors behind it. But before it, why, why? So what? What you need to know is that the founder of of Drupal, uh, Dries Bertard, was a PhD student, and he had working on a PhD scholarship. And then you are not allowed. Well, at least not in Belgium, you are not allowed to have a business next to it. So he was not allowed to start his business, and that created an interesting phenomenon because the founder wasn't part of the game here, at at the start. He was a mediator, but not, not, not a player. And that to me makes uh, almost all the difference. What you see is that this whole ecosystem, business ecosystem, has emerged as one entity. And the relations between it are very interesting. So what I start doing is, um, um, so I, I, as, as kind of what is called participative observation, it's, it's a, an anthropological method. That's what I kind of did with that community. So I was there doing small things, never really uh, significant. Um, but uh, so, so at a certain moment, I noticed that uh, some of the companies st uh, start uh, doing acquisitions or being acqu acqu acquired. And so that kind of indicated that the, 
the Drupal business ecosystem is leaving the startup or incubation stage and it's now getting into the growth stage. So I didn't put uh, the innovation S-curve in there, but if you search for an innovation S-curve, you will see that there's startup phase, growth phase, maturity phase, mostly. That's the three simple divisions. And so, so at this moment, so in end 2009, um, you see the first acquisition starting. So from 2010 onwards, um, we can say that Drupal is in getting into a growth phase and there are new dynamics there. So it will be interesting to observe them. But um, I've been um, talking to most of these companies here, with an exception, of course, with Acquia. I, I did talk to, to Dries, but not uh, as, the, uh, as, as, as part of the Acquia, because Acquia is important, becoming more and more important for the growth phase. But it's not a player for the incubation phase. It's not a player for the startup phase. So what I start doing then is what is no qualitative interviewing by what is uh, the creative interviewing method. So, I mean, you can see some of my papers. Uh, well, you can see my paper of ISPIM um, to, to get some references on, on those methods. But it, the, the, it's a quite it's intuitive method. What you do is um, you, you give a challenge. And then you allow the person just to tell their stories, and it was very interesting because I've talked to like most of the start, uh, the, the 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 owners, the business startups here, um, and they I mean they, they basically they they keep on going, keep on talking, and what I did is ask very specific questions as a way to guide them through the the, the their story to find um, the, the elements I needed for my research, basically. So uh, I provided her with a, with a challenge. So not the first time, the very first time I asked, I, I had this interview with Dries and I did all kind of uh, analysis. I knew Dries, of course, uh, but, um, uh, and then I had some, some kind of uh, questions like, why do you focus so much on co-creation and, and other kind of questions? But I noticed quite quickly that if if you give a very simple challenge, they are it, it's, they are passionate about their project, so just let them talk. And uh, the one challenge I asked all the business owners is say like, look, the, there has been this business ecosystem, and it seems to uh, be doing self-organizing innovation. So what is your contribution? That was enough mostly for for getting a whole flow of 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 well sometimes hours uh, of, uh, of, uh, of monologue, <laughs> mostly. Um, so what you see is that we need to look at the dynamic capabilities, which is basically uh, part of um, it's, uh, the, the, the uh, research-based view. Again, look at the references in the paper. Um, but um, in the dynamic capabilities, you got processes and positions, and they are important to understand. So. Uh, I'll first go over the processes. And what you see is that there have been, uh, in, which is not very strange, of course, we know that already, um, processes in software development are agile. So what does that actually mean? Um, it means that the... Um, so so you, um, you can actually relate the agile processes to the literature on self-organization by looking at vicarious selection. So vicarious selection is a kind of an improvement of natural selection. Um, it's, uh, vicarious literally means replacement. And I think the best so, uh, example to demonstrate it is domestication. So what you see with domestication is that you don't exactly know what you're doing by, but by, by selecting the best around some specific criteria, you can create quite some variation. Just think about cows. There are meat cows and milk cows, and look how different they are. They are created by Vicori selection. So although we don't exactly know what we're doing, we can create a selection of the best. That's basically w w what you can understand. But to be able to do that, you kind of need agile processes to interact uh, directly on, on the things that are happening. So. Uh, from the dynamic capability framework, you have these organizational, organizational managerial uh, processes, uh, which were, in this case, uh, mostly described as agile. But then you also have coordination, interaction, and then re reconfiguration and transformation. 
And the interesting thing is, if you if you uh, listen to their stories, they are actually uh, showing complexity. So um, it it seems a little bit strange, but let me just uh, explain it. Oh, there's something wrong with my slides here. Um, but I'll just explain it. Um, so in the if if I look at the positions, I kind of see two um, policies. The first is the community first policy. So what it actually says is, and it, for, for business people this may be strange, but let me explain it. You will see if, if you understand what are the scarce resources and the abundancy, you will see that it makes a lot of sense. So the idea is to put the community before your business. Now why do they do that? Basically if they, if, if they would do something that would harm Drupal, well because those companies are Drupal only, if if the if the ecosystem is killed, that then of course they are dead too. So so that's a very unhealthy uh, strategy. On the other hand, if they do a project, they do a business and it fails, but the ecosystem still exists, they can always create a new project. For example, um, you have a, a developer company and it sees that there's a big need for training, so they start train becoming a training company. Uh, but take that if that would fail, they would still be able to start uh, doing development, right? So the the biggest problem in the community, if you look at resources, is that um, uh, it's not customers. I mean, none of the uh, uh, companies had troubles getting customers. The biggest problem was uh, keeping their developers happy. So. What they really are focusing on is is the the the, the best so those those uh, those leading companies the, those pioneering companies uh, had also the, the the best developers, and that requires listening a lot to the developers. So what you see is that uh, business owners become like real mediators between all kind of values they need. But basically, by this policy of community first, they are adding complexity, and. A lot of, if you look at a lot of organizations, they try to reduce complexity. So this may look strange, like some of the processes and the policies are adding complexity. But now, um, and that's a little bit uh, strange that it's it's uh, it it got over here. But the next policy is the community contribution policy, and what that will create. To, so the the community contribution policy is the idea that you have like uh, let's say. Uh, three days you work on projects of the company and two days you can work on your pet project or four days on your company and one day on the pet project but mostly the pet project becomes anyway part of the company so so you see that the the the, the it, it it's really a very nice um, environment if you are a very good developer but what that community contribution creates is a constant flow uh, that allows the in, if, if you consider it as a, as a dissipative system, it has a constant energy, but then the, the, the attention is dispersed. So what I see here, and that's what you cannot read over here, but it starts with smart attention dispersion. But dispersion is, think about the first slide, I'll go back to it. This is the a dissipative system. Take that these are all the... Uh, um, um, disperse of, from the community contribution. This is all kind of project that people are having individually, and they can at, at some place be quite chaotic and random, and then at other places they s they become very streamlined. So so you should see this in multiple dimensions, so that depending on 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 the maturity of the the topic they are working on, for example, multilingual or uh, integrating a test unit testing or whatever kind of uh, technology they are they are thinking about there are some people that are in in uh, in in a not yet a, a, a random distribution situation while others are actually getting aligned so what i see is that this actually is creating let's call it a smart well i called it a small smart attention dispersion uh, system that actually allows you to create self organizing innovation that's essential. This is really essential. They create a lot of stigma. The agility allows for, for, uh, for the alignment and, and the coordination, while the other processes and, and policies are actually increasing complexity. This seems counterintuitive for many business things, but this, it's working pretty well. So 
one of the things you can do with that is then so in innovation by self-organization, what you see is that it actually um, makes some of the problems we uh, that are recognized in the managerial literature become uh, less relevant. Like this one is uh, from biotech industry. Um, you find the reference in the paper um, where the innovation performance depends on the numbers of alliances. And of course it increases, but it has also a certain uh, maxima and then it will decrease so more numbers of lies will become um, be counterproductive so so what you see here is that uh, the alliances become a bottleneck for the growth but if, if it's a self-organizing innovation there is no bottleneck because it can happen at a different moment at a different time alliances redefine each other all the time it's so it's it's self-organizing it's going to be a, a lot uh, well, you don't. You cannot make a nice graph as this anymore, but it's it's gonna be uh, very crazy. Um, so how do you create that stigmergic media where you can allow that self-organization? So this is a snapshot of the tools used inside Drupal, but they are they are not unique to Drupal. So again, this is re not so unique to Drupal. It sense that um, other people are of course using Git uh, for their distributed. Uh, things, but I wanted to show the technology part and the social part. For, first of all, here you see a, 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 a stigma G by technology. Basically, what you see is that an issue can have, for example, a status, and there are people that will actually uh, be triggered by the fact that this issue needs review, and then they will look at it because they are reviewers, right? And like over here, you see a critical bug report. Now people uh, related to this kind of you could also look at it so so i'm looking at the views project right so if you look over here to the top maintainers if they see something like a critical bug report they're probably going to read this therefore they don't may find it not relevant but they they will be attracted to it and they there will be an action namely reading the the, the issue and if the issue is really something that they consider important they will start coding so you see how this technology is mediating the development. Um, so the, the other thing which is kind of very interesting in this story is that while this technology was only created for the software developer, it actually created the ability for the business people to mediate themselves. Because what you see over here are the top maintainers of the views module. So basically if you start creating things and, and they become really crazy, you may actually contact those people to, to, for example, you have a project and, and you, you need to create views 2.0, let's say, uh, with all kind of extensions, you can actually find the right people to do that. And in some of the stories I got from the, the uh, pioneering companies is that they, they tell me that um, they, they don't they, they have a project and they're working with something and what we know already from literature in uh, open source uh, and, and innovation is that the innovation is driven by the, uh, the clients. So the clients are creating uh, another kind of force that creates the, the, the need to innovate. But in this case, uh, they, they simply use these systems to find their colleagues and therefore they don't have this, this problem with this, this, this bottleneck because the system mediates. And um, so in this case, it's, it's, it's Fuse. It could, of course, be other modules. And they could figure out, like, you know, this is a module that's not very well developed yet, but there are this and this programmers. So, so they contact them. And mostly, the developer now becomes kind of the mediator for the business. Because here is someone that really likes Fuse. And now there's someone come along, along a business that has money to, to develop on Fuse. So what you see is that, um, that 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 uh, it's not in this case, right? It's just this is just an example. Uh, but the, the 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 developer will start uh, mediating between the company who wants the development done and its own company, because most of the developers are working for Drupal companies, and they want, of course, most of them the best work for the pioneering companies, because that's what they really are focusing on. Um, so what you get is. For the for the company that that is paying the the um, um, the the developer, it's kind of a way to to please the developer, but at the same time get revenue. 
So for them, it's kind of a quick win. So you see all these dynamics happening, and, and it's quite interesting to see how a tool that's only been used first for uh, uh, software development has become such a powerful tool for, uh, for management on a very, very um, self-organizing way. Okay, so that's basically what I wanted to show you. So uh, you see that there is self-organizing innovation possible. Um, we kind of start understanding uh, how to create it because you create that smart attention dispersion. You see that it can actually overcome some of the limits we have recognized recently. And actually, there are already tools that, that are doing it. So maybe a next uh, level would be to uh, focus more on creating this tool. That's exactly what I will do, but that's for our next presentation.